Hi, this is Allison. Hi, Allison. This is Jesse. How are you doing? I'm well. And just so you're aware, Allison, I like to record yeah. everything to put up on, on YouTube just to educate people. Sure. Okay? Sure. So how's you, how are you and your family doing? Good, good. I'm getting sick of being stuck inside, but good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now summer's coming. That's getting harder for everybody. Right. <laughs> right. Um, and so, let me double check. You have Bear, correct? Yes. Okay, because I have a couple of consultations today. And Bear is a German Shepherd Black Mouth Cur Mix. Yes. Uh, 70 pounds, and it seems like just basic obedient stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, I've never had a dog before. He's our first, he's my first dog. <laughs> my yeah, husband sure. broke up the dog. So um, it seems like basic obedient stuff, but sure. it's certainly a nuisance when they're 70 pounds. <laughs> okay. And how long have you had Bear? Um, we had adopted him when he was 12 weeks old. Okay, so you've had him for quite a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, any training? I'm sorry, what was that? Any training? Um, yeah, so we did a class when he was about four months um, at, oh man, the name of the place is going to escape me. Um, but it was just like, I want to say it was like a six week or five week training class for puppies. Sure. It was just like basic commands like sit and stay. And sure. Was it like food stuff? Yes, it was all food stuff, which in the class would work great, and then once we are out in the world, didn't seem to, he didn't seem motivated by treats, like Correct. the training treats. Correct. Um, and did you start him right when you got him at 12 weeks, or is this a little bit later? A little bit later, like I want to say he was probably uh, 15 weeks when we started. Okay. Um, what do you walk him on? Is he like on a harness, a, a gentle leader? Yeah, um, yeah, so he's, it's called the, this is a recommendation from our, over. So the hooks on the front, it's like a like a balance harness, but a blue nine is the brand. Sure. Um, you just put so it you could hook them on the back or the front, and we usually put them in the front. Um, so when you pull up, when you pull on them, it kind of turns them. Sure. Uh, is that what yeah. you've used since he was a puppy, or is it uh, is that what you use now that he's an adult? Now that he's bigger, we didn't start that until my husband originally got like one of those like. Um, I guess you call it a choke collar, right? Yep. Where it kind of gets smaller when you pull it. But he was like outgrowing them so fast that yeah. we just <laughs> we just went with this harness. Sure. Um, and other than that short four to five week um, puppy class, it's been pretty much just whatever. Exactly. Well, I mean, right. It's just us kind of trying to work with them on things we learned in that class. Sure. But like, no, we have not been diligent about. Um, probably in the best way that we can okay. about training him and in that meantime we kind of we moved to a new house and um you know we're dealing with like family illness stuff so um we probably haven't been the best about <laughs> being consistent with him sure so when it comes and that was the one only right was just that one class just, yes okay so when it comes to positive reinforcement um the food stuff it's great for puppies under six months Okay. Okay, so um, I'm going to kind of just explain how dogs learn and why I use the tools that they use and the, the kind of ceilings every method has. Okay? okay. Is positive reinforcement is like kindergarten stuff. Okay? Um, so it's like giving a human kindergarten education and expecting them to succeed in the world. Yeah. It's not going <laughs> to, it's not how it right. works, right? We right. go through years of education and some people go to for even more education, right? Right. So for puppies under six months, they're, you know, mentally, I don't expect a lot from them, okay, when I'm dealing with my clients, because you're not dog trainers, right? right? Most people, when they train their dog, they're, what they're wanting is just a good dog, a yeah. dog that doesn't jump, uh, doesn't bark, at least bark too much, isn't aggressive, is friendly, they can take to the dog park, you know. Uh, and maybe knows a handful of commands like sit and stay and things like that, right? People's expectation of their dogs is, is relatively low as long as it's a good dog, yeah. right? And the main thing is always the dog being friendly because there's a lot of people that excuse behaviors simply because the dog is friendly. Right. 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 So uh, for puppies under six months and for certain personality types, like it's, it's fine, it's whatever, right? Uh, but once a puppy hits six months and we go beyond that, they start to, uh, so mentally, 
Uh, think of a, a six-month-old puppy to a year as a as terrible two's brain. Okay, yeah. if you're a parent, you know what that means. Right. And then teenager body. At yeah. a year, you're looking at teenager brain, adult body. At two years, adult dog. Okay. Okay. That's like the development. So at six months, I can start, even though it's a terrible two's brain, I can start pressing them as an adult. So with my own personal clients, what I tell people is, because what their expectation is, I go to the, the puppy class, and even if you're diligent, I'm going to have a good dog. And that isn't the case, because it's kindergarten education. Right. Okay? So then we have to go to more advanced education. So whether, like, if you get kept with it or not, like, don't beat yourself up over, like, you know, okay. life happened, and then we couldn't, we, now, now we're calling you, right? Yeah. Okay. The other thing that I come across a lot is that when people use positive only, it's the same story. But essentially, is that we did it for a while, and then we didn't have enough time for it, and we just gave up, right? Or not give up, but like stop reinforcing. Stop. It. Right. And the biggest reason is because it wasn't working. Yeah. It, there, so there's no motivation. Right. You know, right. there's no incentive. Exactly. Right. Like, yeah, you see, it's cute when they're a puppy and they're doing these things. Right. Like right. aesthetically, it's cute. But when you're in the real world and it's frustrating because your puppy is lunging and pulling towards another dog, right. Right. now we have a different realm, right? right. Um, so that's the, that's the one thing about positive. It's great for puppies for teaching, you know, developing the brain and stuff. But I, I tell my clients, don't expect amazing things from this. I I, I set the bar low because <laughs> I know it is low. Yeah. Okay. The other thing is with the harness. I understand your husband had the choke collar. Yeah. Is when I know I have a client that has a larger breed dog, a lot of, I'll tell them, like, right off the bat, get a, a much larger, you know, choke chain or what have you, and it'll look silly, but you'll end up only spending 15 bucks as opposed to 100 bucks over 10, you know, as the puppy's growing so quick, right? So that's fine, but the harness is actually working against you in terms of the pulling stuff. Um, I like that you did get the front clip, okay? I'm not saying that it's good, I'm just saying it's better than an actual yeah. harness. And as you explained, all it does is divert the dog's front paws, so there's not as much pulling power. Okay? Right. But harnesses are meant for pulling. So when I see no pull harnesses, uh, to me that's an oxymoron. Because okay. harnesses are meant for pulling. <laughs> yeah. It's contradictory, it. right? Yeah. So it gives you better control but when you have that big of a dog, like the only time I recommend no pull harnesses are for like my puppies, so they don't they don't hurt their throat, okay. right? Especially small breeds, or if I have someone with a Yorkie or someone with a Maltese, they're like you know eight to fifteen pounds. It's much easier because even though they can put more power behind it, they're fifteen pounds, yeah. right? But if you have a seventy pound dog, it's it's, it's a much different conversation. Right. Um, the next step is what's called a gentle leader, which is similar to what you have, but it goes around the muzzle of the dog. Have you seen that? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, the way those work is kind of like a horse, uh, it was a bridle, is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. I always forget, because I always think bright. <laughs> right. So, uh, so with the horse bridle, they, they use that to steer them when they're pulling the carriages. And they have a harness to pull the carriage. So the bridle is to steer the horse, to control them, and the harness is for them to have, uh, to pull the, the carriage, have more, of their of their body weight to put against it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the gentle leader kind of mimics that bridle, and it gives more control. Okay, but you're still going to hit the threshold of when we go outside. It's still going to be constant managing. Okay, so when I deal with my puppies, because people don't like disciplining their puppies, I'll tell them use this these tools for now until your dog's an adult, and then when you're annoying, you come back, and then you'll be ready for the next step. Okay. 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 So, before reaching out, did you do any research on me? Yeah, I did. And I know you do the, the e-collars, which is kind of, I have a, a really good friend in Ohio who's like, has been telling me that that's what we should do for like months. Sure. And she's, like, she's like, why are you waiting? Just do it. Because she's yeah. got a big dog too. <laughs> yeah. So, it's, it's a definite game changer. Okay. Yeah. So, um, if we look across the kind of spectrum of training tools, you have like your, your flat collar, then you have like the gentle leader, then the, the harnesses, uh, then you have your choke chain, and then you have like the prong collar or the spiky looking one, right? And then you have the e collar, okay? Um, the reason why this is, this is so effective is 
It takes very little technical skill. You don't need to be an expert. The, the exercises are very simple, okay? So most dog trainers approach dog training as if they're working with a dog trainer or, mm -hmm. or, or a prospective dog trainer, right? Yeah. And they teach these things that aren't applicable to the real world. I'm a dog owner, dog trainer. I come in, yeah. I go, what do you need? What do you want? Okay, what are the issues? Okay, what does this dog's life look like? Well, what, like, if you could have the life with your dog that you could have, what would that look like? And from there, I know what I need to do, right? So this requires um, very little technical skill. A lot of people talk about timing, you know, and all that stuff. It's just making it more complicated than it needs to be. You don't have to worry about any of that, okay? The next thing is you have a 70 pound dog. Yeah. And like phone callers uh, are very effective. I'm not against them. I, I, I do incorporate them. So like for instance, I had a lady, she was about 90 pounds. She was, she was very small, very petite. Yeah. With a 140 pound Great Dane. Wow. Okay. So for her, she needed both the prong collar and the e-collar to give her leverage. Right? Because there's a 50 pound gap there. Okay. okay. So in most cases, I do solely uh, e-collar because it's okay. the easiest, and then I'll incorporate the prong if I see that the owner needs it. Okay? So I can kind of close the gap on a lot of things. Um, I had another couple a couple years ago. They were about seven years old. They had a 120-pound German Shepherd. And the lady, you know, very small, petite lady, seven years old, and the dog was reactive, which means lunging and barking at other dogs, right? So I come in and I'm like, well, why did you get a German Shepherd when you're 70 years old? But they had German Shepherds all their life, right? So I'm like, okay, well, at least you have some experience, right? But I was able to get the problem done with this. Okay. Right? Because all, all it comes down to is pressing a button. Okay. So with, with the, uh, do you have any um, kind of uh, insight on e collars at all? Not really. I mean, I know my husband actually just joined us. He was on a call, but he just came so up. I don't want you to think someone's listening. Uh, no, 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 yeah. Right? Brian, hi, um, Brian, how are you? The, the biggest thing is that people kind of turn their noses up at it. So yeah. it's like there's the people who think they're awful and then the people who use them. <laughs> Correct. And the people that think they're awful, and I, I've had those people as clients, It's a, a lot of it's just lack of education. Yeah. So when you see these tools, right, they, uh, well, one, because people think electricity, right? Right. This, people see like what looks like spikes, but they're rounded, right? They think of it as yeah. a medieval torch device, okay? Right. So old school dog training was what they call yank and crank, okay? They would say sit, the dog didn't do it, punish the dog, zap the dog, right? The problem with that method is that it requires the dog to have an understanding, like a cognitive, cognitive understanding of what sit actually means. They don't, ever. Yeah. They associate. They go, oh, when you pick up the food and I put my butt down, I get it. Right? right? So they create an association. They don't know that sit, by definition, means putting their butt on a surface. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like, if my mom said, put your, no, sit, and I didn't, and she spanked me for not sitting, as an example, not that she did, I would understand that. Because I know what sit means. You see that? So when you apply it as a punisher, the dog has no concept of why it's happening. Okay? okay. So it's, training has changed a lot throughout the years. Um, that method is still around. Um, it has its, its place in training. I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's, it's not... It doesn't ever work. It depends on the personality type. But most cases is what we do. Uh, we do what we call pressure work. Okay. okay. Pressure work. Uh, so have you ever pulled up and then pushed down on Bear's butt to make him sit? Yeah. Okay. That's pressure. Okay. okay. That's physical pressure. So when he when you do this, you're shaping the behavior, and then once he complies, you would let go, and you probably praise him, right, yeah. or feed him. Yeah. So you added pressure to guide the body into this position, and once he did it, you alleviated the pressure. So the dog goes, oh, when I feel this, if I just put my butt down, it goes away. Okay. okay? This is same, This is also pressure. It's just delivered in a different way. Okay. okay? So this is, have you ever been to a, a chiropractor or a um, physical therapist? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had STEM? Yeah, yeah. 
This is what it is. That feels like, oh, okay. Okay, so because typically during a consultation, I would have you feel this first. Yeah. And a lot of my clients have had, you know, stent therapy. Yeah. So they'll come in, and I actually had a client um, who had a, uh, who has a uh, Bernese Mountain Dog. Yeah. And they were, they contacted us for consultation. They went to the vet. The vet, because they were uh, dealing with aggressive, uh, aggressive behaviors with their dog. The vet said, no, 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 the e-collar will make the dog more aggressive. Okay, so they canceled the consultation, but then she, uh, her baby was, was due, was getting really close, so then they were like, okay, we got to do something about this now, right? right? So they had the consultation, and I came in, and within me saying, oh, this is just a miniaturized TENS unit, she like lost her shit. Because she thought it was, she thought it was electricity, yeah, she's a physical therapist, she's like, I do this to people all day, you know? And she's like, my veterinarian said that it was electrocution. I said, no, your veterinarian's moron. They're, it's it's right. again, it's that, it's that preconceived notion. They don't they don't even like think about educating themselves, right? We worked on the dog, and guess what? The dog had become more aggressive. We actually addressed the aggression issues. Okay, so with the pressure work, the, it's a very simple concept, and it mean, and it's pressure on when you need the dog to do something or stop doing something. Pressure off once they comply. Okay. Okay. So again, you're putting that pressure on. Once he sits, it stops. So we put this pressure on, and it's a, it's a muscle contraction. He feels it, and we find a number appropriate to your dog, much like with the physical therapist, right? They come in, yeah. they raise the number, you say that's too high, they lower it, they let it do its work. It's the same concept, okay? I have the collar on, I'm helping the dog to problem solve on how to turn off the pressure. I'm guiding him. But he has to figure it out. As soon as he figures it out, that contraction stops. He goes, oh, okay, I didn't like that, but when I did this, it went away. Right? Right, right? And then we repeat. And we start shaping the behavior through pressure. Okay? So what makes this effective is that it's uncomfortable. Right? Yeah. So if you're out in the real world and you're stopped at a red light, and maybe he would like typically like to pull and like pee on fire hydrants and stuff. Well, now he's going to keep his butt there right next to you, because the 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 other alternate of well, I want to go pee on that. Well, now we have a, a consequence that you can put the pressure on, and you say don't do that, or else this is going to happen. So then, like a kid, he's thinking, okay, well, I really want to pee on that fire hydrant, but I really don't want that pressure turning on because I don't like it. Right. Right. So in the human world, we have positive and po positives and negatives. Right. If you run a red light, you get a ticket that makes you not want to run a red light, right? right. And now it's a different type of consequence because we have finance, right? Right. right. That means something to us. So the dog, dog don't care. Right. right. So like you're not getting your allowance of twenty treats today. He's like, right. Care, right. He's not even aware of it. So they're aware of the immediate. Okay. So once he understands and we shape these behaviors, then he starts to make decisions based upon them, right? Do I want to do this or not? Am I going to gamble the consequence of pressure? Right. So the next thing is, the way your dog learns, uh, he's got the learning capacity of about a three to four year old child. Okay? A three to four year old child, you have to tell what to do. Clean up your room, go get dressed, go take a bath, right? Go to the bathroom, pick up your plate. Same thing with your dog. If your dog's a three to four year old child, you will, and he's permanently a three to four year old child, you know, as a child matures, he will never get so well trained that he could be independent, if you will. Right. Right? You would always have to reinforce things and tell him what to do. Right. Now, the more you do this, the more your dog is conditioned, the more they lean towards those behaviors. So, like, I train dogs to automatically sit whenever I come to a stop. Okay, so whenever I'm walking with them, they're right next to me. There's no tension on the leash. There's no pulling. When I stop, they automatically sit. Okay? So if you're practicing that every day, you don't always have to reinforce it with your dog. They just do it. Right? Now, maybe they forget. Well, then you reinforce it. And oh, all right. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah. Okay? Um, so then mo the most common, or actually, do you have any questions yet? No. Does that all make sense? Yeah. Do you only keep it on when they're outside? I so and that was gonna be my next thing is um, you you use it when you need it. Okay. For most people, it 
is typically when they go outside on a walk, uh, if their dog has any kind of behaviors that they want to correct, or if they have people come over. Okay, those because you're, you're you're in an environment where there's more stimulus. Right? Okay. So like when people come over, dogs usually bark, they become territorial. Right. And if your dog loves people, you open the door and they're jumping all over the people because they're excited. Right? So to make it easier, that's why I tell my clients, like that's where you want to have your tool. Because you know you need control in that moment. Now I do give other approaches to correct the behavior so that they don't become reliant on it. But typically it's only when they're outside with the dog. Okay? So the next thing is, well after we do training with this tool, we're done, right? We don't need to do anything anymore. No, that's not how it works. Okay? As a human, you can go out and you can decide one day, I want to learn to play guitar. Go on Google, find a teacher, go to class. And then when you leave class, you can decide, I'm going to practice guitar every day. And you can do so. Right? By decision. Dogs don't do that. Okay? Humans are proactive and reactive. Dogs are reactive. Okay, they respond to what's happening or what's the uh, uh, what their owner is capable of doing. Okay, so a lot of people do this. They go, Jesse, it's great, and then take their dog on a walk without this. Right now, they don't have the means to reinforce, and now the dog goes, Oh, you're walking me today, but you don't have that thing on my neck today. What happens if I pull? Nothing. Then the dog becomes a gambler. Okay, and humans do the same thing too, because this has nothing to do with my uh, 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 teaching skill. Oh, did we get hung up here? Hello, hello. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? I'm sorry, I went off Wi-Fi, so hopefully that helps. No, it's fine. I can hear you now. Signal. Um, so while I was at, uh, oh, so if you don't have the tool, right, you don't have the means to reinforce. Right. This has nothing to do with um, my training skill or your training skill or anything like that. Animals are opportunistic. It's a part of instinct. Yeah. So for a human, uh, most common example I like to use is the expressway. You guys drive. Yeah. Okay. Let's say the expressway is 55 miles an hour. How often do you see people going 55 miles an hour on the expressway? Never. Right. <laughs> Unless there's an, like a squad car. Right. right. Then everybody's all like do like going to the, the 55, right? Right. And to give you an example, I was going to a client out in um, Skokie or, yes, like I was going north, right? And I see what looked like a squad car. So I'm like parallel to the squad car, and everybody's like parallel behind the squad car. And then all of a sudden, I, talk, I start to see cars just blazing by. And I'm like, man, you're ballsy. Like, you're trying to get a ticket, right? And then I looked, because it was more and more, it was a college campus security. Oh. <laughs> Not a police officer. So once people realize that, bye, right? Opportunistic. So we have laws and prisons and judges and jails that govern people. But people still play, uh, commit crimes or you know, play with the rules a bit. Same right. thing for the dog. Okay, this is kind of this is your your cop on a collar is what I tell people. When it's on, when it's present, your dog knows you have control. I'm going to behave myself. Okay, if you do the training the way you're supposed to, because if I come in, so this goes zero to one twenty seven. Okay. Every dog is different. I don't know what the dog's number is going to be. But if let's say I come in and I say your dog needs 60, right? And we do the training, dogs doing great on 60. And then I leave and I come back the next week. How'd it go? Oh, Jesse wasn't so good. Tell me what happened. Oh, the dog was still pulling. What was your number? 30. 30 is not 60. Right. 
right? right. So now the dog's going to behave when I'm there because the dog knows Jesse will go to 60, yeah. but my owner won't. And then as soon as I'm gone, because then I represent authority, right? I'm, I'm yeah. disciplining as needed, but when, you know, when it's just the owner. So like with kids, me growing up, um, when I was with my grandma, I knew I could get away with more stuff. Right. 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 And if I, if I was with my mom and my grandma, I knew I could get away with more stuff. Because my grandma would be like, oh, no, no, leave him alone, leave him alone, right? She would spoil me. But yeah. when I was with my mom, I didn't do the same stuff. Right. Right? right. It's, it's the same It's the same learning. Okay? Does this make sense? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So, uh, question so far. Um, I don't think so. Do you have questions so far? No. And is that Barry in the background there? Yes, yes. Okay. He's staring out the window. <laughs> How long is his coat? Um, he's just like a, it's, it's like a medium hair. Um, it's like real fluffy around his neck, though. That's where his hair's the longest. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I was just trying to get a good look at him to see um, uh, what, what he would need. Okay. Oh, I can do, I, if you want later, I can get kind of close up to him. You can look at him if you want me to oh, do anything. No, I can eyeball it. This is this okay. I don't need these. Um, okay, so let me think here. Uh, so we went over the pressure, uh, what it is, which is just the, the, the muscle stimulation. Um, from what I read, it really seems just basic control. Sorry, Brian needs to go do another call. Sorry. No, no worries. <laughs> nice news, Brian. Um, is oh, so there's pulling on the leash, right? Uh, I'm, I'm going to assume, uh, I, I always recommend or assume that people need recall, which is come and called. Yes, yes, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, I feel like that's a safety measure, too, like in case yeah. they get out or something. Correct. Um, yeah. And then uh, jumping on people. Yes, yes. And then bar the barking, like he, I'm oh. kind of hoping somebody walks by our window because he just goes nuts. Like, sure. you, you can see my window shaking outside because he's like trying to punch them out, you know? Yeah. And so when it comes to the behavior stuff, yeah. that's the easiest part. Okay. So uh, think of obedience and behavior as uh, education and morality. Okay. okay. Uh, sit, stay, calm, math, English, science. Don't lie, don't lie, don't steal, don't cheat, don't jump, don't bark, don't bite. Okay. okay? That's how I look at them. So for, for me growing up, I was raised old school. Um, if I didn't do my homework, uh, if I didn't do my chores, uh, if I talked back to my mom, uh, if, if I stayed up past my bedtime, I got spanked. Right? Yeah. It was one consequence for a multitude of behaviors to teach me what to do and what not to do. Okay? Uh -huh. Same thing for the dog. Okay. okay. It's consequence for the things that you don't want. Okay. It's much easier to teach a dog what not to do than what to do. Okay. 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 Does that make sense? Yeah. So with the behavior stuff, the jumping, there's a couple of approaches, and I always give people different approaches because life won't allow one approach to always work. Right. Right. I, I train people to be able to have a life, an enjoyable life with their dog, and I give them the different options, and I'll tell them it. it, it for you, you use what you think is going to be best within that moment. Yeah. Right? Because if you try to make it super concrete, because people will get stuck. They'll get stuck on one thing and then they'll, they'll get frustrated because it doesn't work. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, It'll work 10% of the time, but you need something for the other 90%. Right. 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 So that's, I'm, I'm not too worried about that. I think there was like digging or something about the yard. Yes. He's, he, he completely dug up our yard. I mean, we, we've replanted it. We've decided to kind of give him an area, but it's just a paved area next mm -hmm. to our garage um, right. for him to run around. It's pretty big. It's big as big as a car could fit there. Sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think we're trying to get him so that, you know, he just knows not to go on the lawn, period. Okay. I don't know if, that's, if that seems wise or not. <laughs> Is he ever outside unattended for periods of time? Very briefly, because, you know, um, we don't trust him anymore. You know, okay. he could, he, we're, if he's out there, we're constantly looking at him, you know, out the window. So, gotcha. very briefly, not for very long periods of time at all. Okay. Um, so, if we look at children, right? Um, if my mom said, Jesse, you can't watch TV, and I have two younger brothers and a sister, and, she, and then all of a sudden he's like, oh crap, I gotta go to the grocery store, but I don't wanna take four kids. Right? right, Jesse, would you watch your brothers? Of course, Mom. But now she can't reinforce me not watching TV unless she takes the TV with her. 
Right, 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 right. right. So that's the same thing for the dog, right? Yeah. So when he's unattended, I'm not saying that you can't make it happen, but there's yeah. always going to be some degree of surveillance. Okay. 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 Uh, the e-collar, of course, makes it very simple to correct because you don't have to be outside with your dog. Right. You could just watch it. Okay. Correct. Right. But I, I, I like to be very realistic, realistic with people because their expectation is their dog learns like a human, and that's yeah, not how it, yeah. how it works. Okay. Uh, so that's not a problem. The jumping on people, that's not a problem. There's a couple of ways you can work around that and, and address that. Um, the recall stuff, no problem, and the um, the walking stuff. Um, do you find or do you feel like you'll ever need Bear to go to a spot and like be mobile for like a period of time? Um, I mean, I guess, I don't know. I mean, I, like if we're outside with him, and the neighbors come out, it, he gets, he's just like a little bark, he's, you know, either side of us, you sure. know, we live in the city, our neighbors are like six feet from us, you know, mm -hmm. and he gets real, he scares them, sure. basically, with his barking, so it would be great if I could say, you know, like, get away from the fence, or, you know. Yeah, that's easy, that's, not, I'm not worried about that. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, that would, that's the only thing I can think of, like, you know, we, I do, if he were to get out ever, like out the front door on accident or out the gate on accident. Sure. If he could call, come back when we call him, yeah. Sure. Okay. So, but in the house, I don't really think I would need that. Okay. So this is all pretty standard stuff, okay? okay. I deal with this stuff all the time, so I'm not worried about it. Um, now, of course, they're, due to the whole COVID thing that's yeah. going on now, it's really kind of changed things. Um, this tool allows me to get the simpler stuff done without even having to touch your dog. Okay. Okay. So I think Maria may have explained to you it's all verbal instruction now and stuff, right? Yeah. And people were concerned because they're like, well, if Jess is not going to touch my dog, am I going to get the same results? And the answer is yes. Okay. It may take a little bit longer. Okay. It might be a little bit more frustrating because I'm there to coach you, but yeah. you're essentially figuring, figuring things out yourself, right? Um, but. I will get you to where you need to be at the end of the class so that you will be motivated like, oh, I can do this, right? Okay. So it's just that learning hump. But once you understand it, it's easy. It's super easy, okay? That's why I train all my dogs on this tool, okay? Because I know people, uh, it's effective, it's efficient, it's reliable, okay. on and off leash, right? And now I can train people without even having to handle anything and keeping that six foot distance. Oh, see, I see. He's starting to get crazy because there's a dog out there. Oh, okay, but... <laughs> Yeah. And this is pretty standard stuff. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like that's his TV, you know. Right, it definitely is, especially now that he's never, he's hardly ever created during the day because we're here all the time. So. Yes, and you can address it. You don't ever feel bad about these things. Um, I tell people, you pay for the rent, you pay for the food, you pay for the vet bills, the training, like all this stuff. Like, what does your dog do? <laughs> right. right. Okay. As long as your rules are consistent, you're perfectly fine. Um, and during the process, like, what I tell people is, bring me a list of stuff that you'd want to stop. Yeah. And it, um, I'll, it, like, that's like a class of itself, right? Give you all the information. And then right away, you just start addressing it. Okay? Now, all these things are pieces to a puzzle. Okay? This goes in hand with disciplining them for um, uh, barking out the window. Yeah. Okay, because this, since you walk your dog, you know, in the city, most people walk their dogs every day. They yeah. practice this every day. So it keeps it consistent. There has to be a structure. It's not just I come in, we train the dog, and then I leave, and everybody's good. They go back to their life. Like, it's, it's constant reinforcement. But you're not always having to do stuff. Like, once your dog understands how to walk on a leash without pulling, that's it. Right? As long as you're cool. How do you feel about, like, we have a 15 year old and an almost 12 year old. Um, currently, our 15 year old can handle him because she's tall. She's you know she's a grown up, grown up size. Um, mm -hmm. But none of the two, obviously, my six year old can't handle him. But um, do you feel like in the training process, like they should be involved, or do you feel like once he's kind of trained on this collar? I mean, like, I don't know how to involve them because sure. I would love if they could walk the dog, you yeah. know? So I encourage um, anybody in the family that's going to be a part of the training to be a part of it. Okay. okay. Even if they're not going to handle, they get to watch and see and learn. Okay. Right? So that later on in life, when your six-year-old is then 10 or 12, right? right? Um, the other thing is transference is very high, which means 
So tip before pre-COVID, typically what a session would look like would I would come in, I would work with the dog, so the person would see, I'd give them the dog, and now the dog had a foundation. Right? Yeah. So I did a bulk of the work, and then I give it to the owner, and I go, do this, and press this button at this number. And like 80% would transfer over. Okay? Yeah. And then, like, let's say they got a boyfriend or girlfriend, and they want to be part of the training. Boom. Real easy. As long as the exercises are so simple, as long as they understand they can replicate the exercise, which I trained, uh, the youngest child I trained, I believe he was like 11. Okay. And he was, he was very intelligent, he was very smart, and he, he took to everything really well, okay. um, that he was able to walk his dog. Now, he was an 11-year-old with a schnauzer, a miniature schnauzer, so his dog was only yeah. 20 pounds, okay? okay? So we'll keep that in mind. Um, because, like, let's say a bear had a moment and decided to pull, you know, the, the kid's not going to have enough time. And plus, he's seven yeah. pounds, right? So there's some things there. There's always the option of pairing the e-collar with this for the children right. to give them more leverage. It's perfectly safe to use. Um, but, yeah, they're more than welcome to be a part of it. I encourage it. Um, you know, a six-year-old might forget it by the time he's old enough to walk the dog, but... <laughs> right. But maybe my dog will be old by that time. <laughs> yeah, it would be a lot easier. Um, but yeah, this tool allows essentially for us to get the training done. Um, and I'm not sure if Maria told you, I, uh, I've had one client start their program since this all, all happened. And they were skeptical. Um, okay. You're okay. And they were skeptical, right? They're like, uh... And I was like, right. don't worry about it. Like, we'll get it done, right? And she, we had her third class on Sunday. She's raving about it. She loves it. Um, she did a, a testimonial, so you can find it on my on my YouTube channel. Okay? okay. And she talks about her concerns about, like, you know, we weren't going to see you work with the dogs. We weren't sure how it was going to work. And she actually preferred it. Okay? Um, so the exercises are simple. Um, it's easy. And what I've done is we've taken – all the stuff you, you, you've explained to me can be done within six classes. Okay? Okay. So I'm also, and these are six classes where uh, I would meet you if you do the, at the park. Uh, I think Oz Park, because it's nice and big, and there's plenty of distraction to work at, is a great place to meet. And then I'm also adding in two additional virtual lessons via Skype, okay? Okay. Uh, the reason is, uh, think of the in-person lessons as a lot of coaching on what to do, but you're going to have questions. Right? Yeah. So the virtual aspect of it is so that we don't waste time answering questions during the in-person. We okay. can do that over the, the Skype. Okay? And this way you get the most out of the classes. So pre-COVID, my six classes was 825. Okay. And what I've done is I've just, we've been telling people, we're going to keep things simple. We're going to keep it 825, but you're getting an additional two hours of, of coaching. I'm okay. also going to be putting up supplementary training videos on my YouTube channel for you to use as reference. Okay, so this way you're working with me to handle you and your dog in your specific scenario, but there's also kind of more black and white, simple stuff that can help you in the training as well. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> doing what we can with what we have. I know, it's hard, I get it. I'm a, a therapist, so um, yeah, having to transfer your job to being over the phone, and yeah. it's hard. <laughs> Especially with something like this, because it's very, it, it's very hands-on. Yeah, you know? totally. Um, but I don't have any, this is pretty standard stuff. You don't have anything out the ordinary uh, in my experience. Okay? Yeah, okay. Um, and then the collar that he would need, so he's 70 pounds. This is actually the one that I would recommend for him. Okay? Okay. This is the highest power collar. Uh, this is meant for 70 pound dogs and over. Okay? okay? Plus he's got the thicker coat, so we want to make sure that we get through to that. Yeah. Um, so the training program is 825 for essentially six in person at the park and two virtual, so eight total. Okay. This tool itself runs about three fifty with tax. Okay? okay. Now this is expensive, but it will last you a long time. Okay. Wow, okay. I've had mine seven, eight years, no issues. Um, they're completely waterproof, both the receiver and the transmitter, which is the remote. Okay. Um, this has an LED screen that's number specific, so one, two, three, four, five, all that stuff, and it lights up so you can see it at night. Uh, it's a one mile range, so plenty of range for the standard family pet. Yeah. Um, but this is, uh, for me, the best tool. Um, there's other brands, there's cheaper ones. You don't want the cheaper ones because they're more along the lines of what we would call a shock. Okay. Uh, okay. I felt them. And so, to give you an example, I had a client many years ago that had bought one pre consultation. And I was like, well, let me feel it, right? And I, he put out four out of a hundred. And when he, when he hit the button, 
my hand literally jerked up and for about 15 minutes I could feel just like residual, you know, wow. feeling there. Um, yeah. And I told him, if that's four out of a hundred, I don't want to know what a hundred is. Okay? Right. It's right. crazy. Because I could be on, I, I, I felt this maxed out and now I was fine. Oh, you know? okay, okay. So I, and, and what I recommend to my clients, so what I would do typically is have you feel it. Um, but when you get yours, like you can put it on and then just go low and it just slowly go up until you feel it to get, kind of get an understanding of what it is. Okay. Totally. But it's perfectly safe. It doesn't explode. It won't burn your dog's neck or anything like that. Okay. Cause it's electric, but not electricity. Right. Um, and it'll last you a long time. So it's an investment, but it's, it's a, it's a, it's a good investment. Um, there's another brand that a lot of people ask if they can go with that's similar to this one. But what I've noticed with that particular brand is that the batteries die a lot. Oh, so you're okay. constantly replacing the battery. Okay. With this, you're spending more anyway. Correct. Now, because these are rechargeable lithium batteries, um, and the same thing for the other one, yes, these can wear out. I've had mine wear out once in the, you know, seven, eight years that I've had them. Um, and they run like 15, 20 bucks. And you open it up, and you replace it yourself. No big deal. Okay. Uh, okay. Other questions. Um. So you, where do you do you order them before? We we'll send you the information. Yeah. Okay. Maria, she'll follow up with an email. Uh, she'll send you a contract form, um, and then uh, she'll send you the make and model that I'm suggesting that you get. Okay. And then um, any training material that you'll need, like a long leash for when we do the recall stuff. And then she'll send that all to you, and you want to have that ready before the first class. This is the thing that you'll need for sure. The long leash you won't need to about the third or fourth class. Okay? okay. But typically, people just order everything all at once just so they have it. Yeah. And then you know we'll meet out at the park, and then we'll work out uh, and distraction. And then if you find so, what's great about this is if you go into a different environment, um, if the dog once the dog has the concept, it's just a matter of making the dog respect the command. Yeah. That it's always just raising the number. That's why I love this tool because it allows me to adjust according to the setting, whether I'm inside or outside in a new environment. If the dog's blowing me off because they're like, ah, oh, whatever, like I want to sniff these new smells, I can make it important through this without a doubt. Okay. Okay. Now you do you'll do training like on the weekends because the, yes. really the only day that we're both free because I work Saturdays is Sunday. Uh -huh. So that's that's okay that works for you? Yeah, so currently, uh, and I'm trying to be flexible here, is right now I've had um, operating limited staff at my facility, yeah. right? It's me, my brother, and Maria's working from home doing all the booking stuff. Is we added transportation, so we're trying to keep my schedule open during the week so I can bring dogs back and forth. Um, and I'm only actually offering training on, so far it's Sunday. If people need Saturday, we're going to open it up too. But that's yeah. not a problem. Okay. 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 Good. Perfect. Yeah. That works for our schedule. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? No. And then, how many? Do you know how long it's taken to ship the collars? Like when you order them, is it longer we've, because of COVID? Or we've had someone uh, order, and I think they got theirs on time. Okay. Yeah. Like there's not been issues. So like, if you want to write it down, I can give you the make and model now. Um, and then Maria will just That's all right. That's okay. I can get her just send me the stuff. Sure. And if they give you a date, because even before this, we've had clients order it like a day too late, and then they don't want to like reschedule the lesson, is that I'll bring in one of my own, and I'll just sanitize it real quick, and then have you fit the dog and everything. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll see. I mean, I know things are just a little... Like, I know Amazon is, you know, they'll... They'll project the data, you know, and then it comes the next day. <laughs> yeah, you know? no, from what I've been hearing, yeah, a lot of people are having the same experience, so I should be fine. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, okay. and then is there, like, when you guys send something, is there, like, a contract to sign when you send the um, information for us, like, a training contract for us to sign with Correct. you? Maria's going to send the training contract with all the information. Perfect. It's usually a longer email. I always recommend that people read, read through it because <laughs> they'll skip stuff. And then we'll have the training, and then they'll say, like, what I never, I'm like, did you read the email? They're like, no. I'm like, well, that's why you missed it. So, okay? <laughs> okay. Yeah, but she'll be in contact with you with all that stuff. Okay, perfect. That's great. I don't think I have any more questions right now. Awesome. So if you need anything else, let us know. And just so that you're aware, like, let's say, you know, you, you get all the, like, we get a lot of stuff done within, like, a shorter time. Like, and you have two in-person visits left, you can save them. Okay. okay. If you want to save them for something that's more like in, like maybe in the home, because of everything that's going on, I've been telling people it's fine. Um, you know, if, if all of a sudden they have to put like stop the training because of the circumstances, it's fine. I understand. 
we'll just make a note of it. We just let them know that, you know, if you come back in the future and things are like back to normal, uh, you know, you might have people that you have to wait, you know, to like for me to get off my calendar and stuff. So totally. Okay, that's great. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. So we'll be in touch. If you need anything else, you let us know. Otherwise, it was nice. Skyping yes. with you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.